Hey, Nerdy Knitter, sometimes it's the finishing details that can really make or break that sweater you've just finished knitting. Small touches like a folded neckband can really elevate your knitwear from homemade to handmade. So today we're going to demonstrate exactly how I knit a folded neckband so you can add one to your next knit sweater. Before we do that, I just wanna say, hey, I'm Tanya here at Nerdy Knitting. I'm a certified knitting instructor and a knitwear designer. My goal is to help you become a more confident, adventurous knitter. And adding special finishing touches to your sweaters, even if the pattern doesn't call for them, can really help you build your knitting confidence. Now I've been working on a really big knitting project, something that's taken me a lot of time to complete and I really wanted it to be finished well and one of those finishing details that I wanted to add to this sweater was a folded neckband. They just look so nice. Instead of just a bind off edge, you get this nice folded look and you don't see a bind off edge because it's sewn down inside the sweater. It almost looks like it was machine made, this type of collar. And we can replicate that with our hand knit sweaters very easily. And what's really great about this process is that even if your knitting pattern doesn't call for this method, it just wants you to pick up stitches, knit a bit of ribbing and bind it off, you can replace that and put a folded neckline in instead just to elevate that sweater just a little bit more. Now you're not going to deviate from your knitting pattern just yet. You're going to follow the instructions and pick up the required number of stitches that you need for your neckline. And most often you're knitting in some sort of a rib pattern, maybe a two by two or a one by one. Uh, anything like that will work, but you can try other patterns as well. If you wanna try something really different outside of the box, then perhaps knit a small swatch, fold it over and practice this method before you do it on your actual sweater. That way you'll get a good idea of how that folded neckband is going to look. But for most basic rib patterns, it works just fine. Once you've picked up the required number of stitches and you've established the pattern that you're using, whether it's a two by two rib or a one by one rib or something else, the next step is to knit that collar for twice the length or the depth that you'd like it to be. If you'd like a collar that is one and a half inches deep on the neckline, then you're going to knit until you reach three inches because you're going to fold it in half and sew it down. So you want it to be twice as long as what the finished neckline will be. Then once it's that desired depth, you're ready to sew it down on the inside. We're not going to bind off the stitches. We're going to sew down those live stitches. And the one thing you're going to wanna to do is cut your yarn after you finished knitting that neckline, but you're going to leave a long tail. Measure it out so it's about three times the circumference of that neckline, just so you have plenty of yarn to work with. Now, before we look at the actual process, if you're finding this video helpful, would you mind giving it a thumbs up? I would really appreciate it. It helps the video spread a little bit further and reach other knitters who might find this content helpful. Now, the actual process of working this is called a whip stitch. We're going to whip stitch those live stitches individually to the pickup edge along the inside of that sweater. If you take a peek inside your sweater, where you've picked up those stitches for the neckband, you'll see a very strong line right there. And each of those stitches will be joined to each of the stitches that's on your needle right now. But before we do that, there is one more thing you need to know. You have to look at the sweater and decide how tight or loose that collar needs to be. If it's a crew neck and it's sitting really close to the neck, you're going to want to whip stitch fairly loosely so that collar can stretch enough to fit over the, the wearer's head. You don't want it too tight that you can't actually put it on over your head. On the other hand, if it's more of a boat neck or a, a scoop neck or just a wider neckline, where you know it's going to fit over the head anyway, and you're afraid it might be a little bit droopy, then you can sew this down more firmly, not too much slack as you're sewing everything together, and that will help things keep their shape. So but decide now which of those methods you need to do, and as you're whip stitching, you can give that yarn a little extra space if you need some stretch, or you can do it really firmly if you want that collar to stay really firm and in place. So once you've cut that yarn, you've threaded that long tail, it's time to fold that collar in and start lining things up. Now, the first thing you wanna do after you roll that collar to the inside, you want to match up the pattern. You don't want your collar to be skewed off sideways. And then you're going to look for the pickup edge under that stitch. You find that stitch that lines up with that first live stitch on your needle, and you insert the tapestry needle from back to front under the legs of that stitch. Once you've inserted under the legs of that stitch along the pickup edge, you're going to 
find the matching stitch on your needle. It should be the first stitch on your left needle. You're going to insert that tapestry needle from back to front. Now remember, each stitch on your needle is just a loop. So you wanna insert into the center of that loop. Pull your needle through, pull the yarn through, and adjust the tension at this point. Remember, if your collar needs more stretch, keep it a little loose. If you want it to be a nice firm edge, then you can tighten right up on that. And then you're going to repeat this process. Insert into the back of the next pickup stitch. And once you found the first one, it's easy to find the second one. It's right beside the one that you've just sewn. So insert into that next pickup edge and then into the next live stitch from back to front, taking it right off your needle and sewing them together. And then you continue doing this around. After you finish a few inches, you can start testing the firmness or the stretchiness of the edge as you go. And then also make sure you're lining up the pattern as much as possible so it looks really nicely finished. And then keep matching the tension as you knit across, make it as stretchy or as firm as you need, and then just sew down all of those stitches so they're sewn down to the inside. Then once you've finished, all you need to do is weave in your ends, perhaps give your sweater its final wash and block to make sure everything is set and looks really lovely. Now, when would you want to use a folded neckline like this? I love to add this on sweaters where I'm spending a lot of time to make it look absolutely perfect. I think a folded neckline just elevates it just a touch so it just looks so nicely finished. You could also add it wherever you want to replace the neckline in the sweater pattern that you're using. Now, if you're a bit nervous about sewing down live stitches and you're afraid if it doesn't come out right and you have to unpick it, then you've got all of these live stitches to deal with. You can do the same method by binding off your stitches first. And this is actually a really good method if your sweater collar is on the loose side and you wanna tighten things up, make it a little more firm, add some more structure, then you could bind off the stitches quite firmly first and then sew them down. One bound off stitch matched up with one stitch along that pickup edge. It's the same process, just the stitches have been bound off first. Now, if you're curious about the sweater that I knit in this video, I've got a whole time-lapse video that shows how I sewed it all together. It took me quite a long time because there's a lot of sewing involved in a saddle shoulder sweater like this. If you're interested in seeing that process, then click the video right here and I'll see you in the next video.